Our Sunday school class, one of our Sunday school class, the curriculum that we use is godly play. And I love it for lots of reasons. One, because it has the word play in the title. But mostly because two things. One is the grounding, the focus point of each class is the stories that we find in the Bible. We tell the stories with the kids. We don't read them. We tell them with props. And they get to hear them mostly in their entirety. And they hear about these characters that are um, admirable and questionable, whose lives are amazing and messy, just like ours. And we approach those stories with wonder. We, every week when we read the stories, we tell the stories, we ask what's called wondering questions about them. I wonder what you like best about the story. I wonder what part of the story is about you. I wonder if we could leave anything out of this story and have all the story that we need. So we ask these wondering questions and we listen to the stories and we tell the stories and that's the centerpiece of our class together. And what I hope and our Sunday school teachers hope is that this instills uh, a sense of wonder um, in our kids and in ourselves about our spiritual lives, about these stories, that, and that we learn that there's not a fixed meaning for them, there's no certitude around them, that certainly isn't something that you get from a teacher or an expert to tell you this is what it means, but we all have a piece of wisdom to, from in us that comes from God about these stories. And the stories are always evolving in terms of what, how they're speaking to us in this moment in our lives and in the world. So today, we're going to tell a story, and we're going to wonder about it together. We're going to tell a story, one of the Advent stories from the Gospel of Luke, the story of Zechariah and Gabriel. So let's listen. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, for Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of people was gathered and praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord standing at the left side of the altar of incense. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for you will, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord, their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will, be, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children in their disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. But how will I know this is so? I'm an old man and, and my wife is on in years. How, how will I know this is so? I'm an old man, and my wife is on in years. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you, to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. 
Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized he had seen a vision. He kept motioning to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. Zechariah was afraid. I wonder. I wonder why Zechariah was afraid. Although, I think for me, the more honest question is I wonder how Zechariah couldn't have been afraid. Because even though, you know, he came up to pray at, in the sanctuary, to offer the incense, you would, you would think, in theory, it might not be too surprising to have a voice of God come to you or a vision of an angel when you're praying. But really, how often when we pray do we really think that the voice of God is going to show up? And especially, I mean, maybe Zechariah was praying, one could imagine praying for the longing of his own heart to have a child. And he'd been praying that prayer for so long that maybe he'd forgotten that was even a prayer. That longing had been with him for so long that to imagine that God could actually show up and respond. So that when God does, when the angel of the Lord appears, that was, it was scary. Not to mention the content of what the angel said. I mean, the angel said, I've come to bring you great news. You're going to have a child. So, the, the words that Zechariah and Elizabeth had been waiting for, for years. But who is this child going to be? The angel doesn't say to Zechariah, your child will be of the priestly order like you and your wife, Elizabeth, safe in the priestly caste knowing for sure what you will do day in and day out and have the protection of the priests. No, your child will be like Elijah, the prophet. Zechariah was a righteous man, knowledgeable in his scripture, in his tradition as a devout Jew. He knew what it meant to be a prophet. And that life was not an easy life. So you can imagine Zechariah hearing this from the angel, like, you're going to have a child. And Zechariah thinking, you have got to be kidding me. I've been praying for this child for my whole adult life. And the child that I come is going to have the life of a prophet? Probably die a prophet's death? So yeah, Zechariah was afraid. And so in response to Zechariah's fear or Zechariah's question, the angel Gabriel says, I will make you mute. And the scripture says, because you did not believe me, I will make you mute. I wonder. I wonder, was that a punishment? You didn't believe, so I'm going to, with the power of God, smite you? Was it, I wonder, was it a show of power of Gabriel saying, I'm Gabriel. I'm the messenger of God. You will believe me that I have the power. I have the voice of God when I tell you this. I wonder. I wonder if maybe it wasn't a punishment or a message. I wonder if the silence, the muteness, I wonder if it might have been a gift or an invitation. I wonder if God heard Zechariah's fear, fear for himself as a father, fear of what he was going to say to these people that were waiting for him outside. I wonder if God had compassion and so took away the requirement that Zechariah had to have a response, at least a verbal response. I wonder if God knew that sometimes when we are deeply afraid, it's the time not to speak, to not to react, to not to rush in but to listen, to sit and wonder, how can this be? 
What does this mean? I wonder what that time of silence afforded Zechariah. I wonder what may have happened in those moments, those days, in this case, those months, where Zechariah was listening in silence. Let's see. After those days, his wife, wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. And they said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to Zechariah to find out what name he wanted to give him. John, John, his name will be John. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that he would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown mercy, promised to our ancestors, as he has remembered his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and, and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, you will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the ways of peace. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about through the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. So of course the child we're talking about is John the Baptist. And there's lots of miraculous stories in the stories in the first chapters of Luke leading up to Christmas. So many things that are miraculous. And for me, though, one of the most miraculous things is this journey of Zechariah. From first seeing the angel Gabriel being so filled with fear, maybe fear for himself as a father, fear for how he would speak to the people after that vision, the people who are living in the first century Palestine under the oppression of the Roman Empire, how he moved from that to this song of praise. That the words out of his mouth after this time were words of praise to God, assurance of God's deliverance of God's people. And what's most striking to me is that Zechariah didn't say, God will come and smite our enemies. 
what that song says is God remembers God's covenant with tender mercy. God will come with tender mercy. It seems like everywhere we turn right now, we are told to be afraid. Afraid of refugees. Afraid of immigrants. Afraid of Muslims who follow a prophet like ours, who speaks of peace and love and justice. Afraid. What I believe, what I think, is that what our world needs, what our children need, what our souls need, is not more fear, not to be told to be afraid. What we need, what our world needs, is hope. The hope that Zechariah spoke of. The hope that reminds us that God is still doing what God always does. Loving this creation, this world, with tender mercy. That God has not forgotten God's covenant. I wonder what happened in that time with Zechariah that moved him from being so filled with fear. Fear for himself, fear for the world. To being able to speak and look for and notice God breaking forth in the world. What's most miraculous to me about that is that the situation in the world had not changed for Zechariah or his people in those nine months. They were still living under the oppressive security state of the Roman Empire. They were still under the oppression of war, injustice, violence. And yet Zechariah could speak to the people and to his soon-to-be-born son and say, I see God being born in this world. My prayer for you in Advent, my prayer for me in Advent, is that this time of waiting can be a time for what you need to move from fear into hope. If you have fear for the world, fear in our own lives, maybe anxiety, that we can take the time we need to hear the voice of God speaking to us. Do not be afraid. I have not left you. I am doing what I always do. It was a time such as this that God was birthed into the world. It is a time as such as this that God is always being birthed into the world. May we, like Zechariah, live our lives with hope and justice, kindness and compassion so that ourselves, our children, our world can see the light that is to come, and learn to walk in the ways of peace. May it be so. Amen.